So today's going to be really casual. Um, I'm going to have lots of opportunities for you guys to ask questions, um, but hopefully you will all learn a lot. Kind of trying to gauge the audience here, how many people currently use a social media platform of any kind. Is it Facebook? Is it YouTube? Lots of YouTube. Okay, good. So today we're going to have some fun. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, a lot of the things are going to apply from platform to platform. So if I'm talking about a platform that you're not on, a lot of the concepts are very, very similar from platform to platform. So, um, so yeah, so welcome. Like they said, I'm Lindsay. I host a YouTube channel called Inside the Hemp. I post videos usually about garment sewing, but I tend to dabble in quilt making and bag making. So there's a little bit for everyone there. I am going to talk today about finding, using social media to find sewing inspiration, uh, find some common fit issues that you might find in your patterns, learning new techniques, and ultimately making connections. Because at the end of the day, social media is that. It's social. It's a social networking is what I like to call it. You know, you go to your networking events for work and for business, and you meet people and you mingle, and it's the same thing. You just do it behind the screen. And you don't have to put makeup on, and you just take your pajamas. It's great. <laughs> so how did I get here? I know that a social media expert and a passionate sewist usually aren't two things that you find inside one person. And my journey to get here is a little interesting. It's kind of a lot of happy accidents, which is great. So in college, I studied broadcast journalism. I thought I was going to be Katie Couric, but unfortunately, I didn't want to move to middle America and report on cow tipping or report on, you know, one bad weather event after another. So um, after college, I decided to get into sales. That was like the next best thing. Um, and through that, my bosses at that job said, you know, there's this thing called social media, and everyone says that you kind of have some social media accounts. Why don't you do our social media? So I had a MySpace at that point, a Facebook, and a Twitter. That was all that existed. So I didn't know. I was like, I'm doing it for fun, for me. I don't know how to do this for a business. But thankfully, they paid me to figure it out, <laughs> to figure it out for them. And after that, I had a lot of small businesses come to me and say, I don't want to do this. I don't want to learn it. I'm too busy. I'm wearing too many hats. Can I pay you to do it? And I said, sure. So I started my own social media management company, and I managed, oh gosh, hair salons, gyms, consignment stores, you name it. I was just the behind-the-scenes person posting for all of them on social media. Um, and they loved it because they didn't have to worry about it at all. They'd hear something and they'd say, figure this out. And I was like, so that was really great. Meanwhile, I had just moved to a new city. I didn't know anybody. And so I went online and found a group of crafters. And their very next time they were all getting together was at a sewing shop. And they were going to learn how to make tote bags. And I thought, oh, I've always kind of wondered, you know, if I'd be any good at that sewing thing. So I showed up, made a terrible tote bag. No interfacing, nothing. And but I was hooked. The very next day I went and bought a sewing machine. I brought the whole box to that sewing store and I said, help me. And I took classes every week for two years. Eventually I outgrew what they could teach me. And so I started to go online to try and figure out how can I learn more. And what I discovered there is there was kind of a, a vast hole in the social media sewing world. There were a lot of bloggers taking pictures, talking about things they made, but nobody was doing a lot of educating. Nobody was doing any video, hardly at all. And I had been a fan of YouTube. I'd been watching the beauty videos and the fashion hauls and you know all of that stuff. So I said, I can do what they're doing and apply it to um, sewing. So five years ago, I launched a YouTube channel with zero followers, zero anything, and I have grown it into what it is today, and it's my full-time job, which is wild. I am a professional YouTuber in the flesh. We do exist. We are not myths or legends or people that only live in California or whatever it is. Here I am. So I have my social media background, and I apply that to what I do 
my sewing on YouTube, and it's been the perfect little job that I never knew even existed. I kind of just made it up, I guess, and it's been great. So today, we are, like I said, we're going to talk a lot about social media, um, and so I pulled some stats for you guys just to kind of give you an idea of how massive social media is. My favorite stat up here is the Instagram one. 10.9 million posts are tagged specifically with hashtag sewing. That means 10.9 posts about sewing have been posted to that network in its lifetime. So there's a lot of people talking about sewing. It's all kinds of different sewing. It's, uh, if you go to the hashtag, you'll see garment sewing, quilting, kids clothes, I mean, everything under the sun. So we'll talk about how we can use these numbers, use these accounts and these posts that people are doing to help us better ourselves at our sewing. And we're going to start with Pinterest. Okay, so who is familiar with Pinterest? Great, that's a lot more than Thursday. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and, you know, Pinterest has gotten kind of a reputation. Each network really has its own little reputation. But for Pinterest, it's where people go to plan imaginary weddings, dress children that don't exist, and decorate homes that we can't afford. And I think all of us would add, you know, would have fabric stashes that are immaculate and, you know, closets that are huge, you know, all of those kinds of things. But within all of that, there is also a really great sewing community. So Pinterest is made up of pins and boards, if you're not familiar with it. A pin is an individual post. And those individual posts are organized into boards. Boards are categorized however you want to categorize them. So my Pinterest, for example, has my makes. And anytime I post a pin that is something that I've made, it goes into the my makes board. And then people can follow the board. And every time I add something, they get notified that Lindsay's got a new pin in the my makes board. So that's how that works. Also, a very easily searchable platform. Not all of them are. Um, and so the three ways to use Pinterest are to find inspiration. So like ready to wear, you know, what Lily Nails is posting or what some designer that you love is, is posting. And you can say, oh, I can make that. So then you recreate it. Photo tutorials. And I'm going to show you examples of all three of these. So it's a whole tutorial in one picture. You don't have to go to a blog post. You can if you want extra information, but it's all right there at a glance if you can make sense of what they're <laughs> trying to tell you. And there's infographics. Infographics are like a ton of information, visually appealing, all in one photo. So here is what some inspiration photos might look like based on your personal style. But you can see all three of the garments, or well, they're wearing lots of garments, but all three of these ladies have clothes that we could easily and with fabrics that we can easily find. So I would pin these to an inspiration board, and then when I'm going out fabric shopping or whenever I, the new pattern collection comes out, I can reference back to this and say, oh, that looks just like that cardigan that that girl wore in that inspiration photo that I found. And it really just helps keeping your creativity going and giving you a little bit of confidence that what you're gonna make is wearable and it looks good and here's how you can style it and look as put together as they do. So here are some photo tutorials. So you can see the entire tutorial, for the most part, is all in one photo. How to make a shirt bigger. You can see she basically cut out a little um, pizza shape, sewed it in, and now she's got a bigger shirt. How to sew darts. I mean, you have to have a basic understanding of sewing with this, but for those of us that sort of know what's going on, we know what they're trying to <coughs> explain. And if you didn't and you needed more information, you could click through to the Inevitably, a blog post usually from what is that saying? Treasury.com or something? That's what it says. Um, and they will have the full explanation. But it's really cool because if you're just looking to do something that you think, I think I remember how to do this, and you just need a little bit of help, this is a great way to do it. And then this bag is, you know, really cute and fun and pretty straightforward. So, next up are infographics. So, again, a lot of information in one snapshot. The needle selection one I think is a lot of fun. It's like gamifying, picking a needle, you know, start here. What are you making? A or B? Follow the little pipes all the way down. And there's all about sewing seams. And then there's all about pattern rulers. So you can see a lot of information 
compacted in one space. You're not reading through an entire article about these topics. You can just quickly at a glance understand. And you can say all of these to your various boards and refer back to them anytime you want. So it's like your own encyclopedia of topics that are interesting to you. Okay, questions about Pinterest. If you make your own notes so whenever you see a pin and you want to add it to one of your boards, that's called repinning. And when you repin something, you can add a caption. The caption is public, but it can be your own notes if you would like. Um, or it could just be something for the general public. But yes, there is a space to add a caption, just other people can read it. Unless it's private. Come again? Unless the board is private. Then. Correct, unless the board is private. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these you need a, an account for, yes. The only thing that's a little bit, you know, Facebook owns Instagram now, and Google owns YouTube. So if you have a Google, you have a YouTube. If you have a Facebook, it's easy to get an Instagram. There were some more questions. Okay, we'll decide. Go ahead. For some odd reason, I cannot figure out the platform of interest and I can get copies. So I think <laughs> I'm over analyzing it. Yes. What would be a resource like in YouTube? Is there a YouTube tutorial that says, if I end up in a rabbit hole, not in able to repin anything. So I think I'm short seeing. I've met me, I'm sure it's <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have not met you, and I have a lot of confidence in me right now. So Pinterest actually has their own help center okay. where you can type in how to repin, how to whatever, and they have a lot of really great articles. I want to say, in my opinion, Pinterest is the most user-friendly in that regard in having this library of articles to help you figure out their platform. So I would go there first, and then if not, just how do you bring in Pinterest on Google? There's tons and tons of articles on it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I made all of the clothes that I'm wearing in the pictures. No, I don't know what pattern it is. Thank you, but I do have a video on and you can find it on YouTube. <laughs> yes. So when you're searching for like a tutorial on all about seams, yes, is it better to use the search function within Pinterest? Yes. I think so. Okay. I think so because otherwise you're going to get, you know, blog articles. You're going to get inundated with whatever Google thinks is the most important okay. thing. If you just want to utilize Pinterest platform because you know you want to save it to a board and you want to be able to find it later, that's the best part about Instagram is being able to save it. It's organized. You know where it is. You can go back and find it later. So yes, I would always search within Pinterest if you're looking for a pin. Okay. We'll have time for more questions at the end, so if you feel like something pops up later, it's fine. All right, let's talk about Instagram. Who has an Instagram? Yay, you guys. Who was following me? Oh, that's significantly less. Here's my Instagram handle. I just had a major milestone on Instagram. I just reached 10,000 followers, which is the biggest deal on Instagram because it unlocks all of these little weird funny things that Instagram deems is only important for people who have 10,000 followers, which is so annoying, but I'm there, so it doesn't matter. So I'll never be on Instagram again. <laughs> I love Instagram. It's my absolute favorite place. I'm um, a favorite resource for sewing. This is my funny quote about Instagram. Not many things scare me more than making a pattern I haven't seen a hashtag for. And if you've ever used Instagram to search for a pattern, you know what I'm talking about. And this was posted by Someone that I follow, S is first, so if you want to follow her. Okay, so Instagram is made up of more than just this, but it's mostly posts and stories. So a post are all the little squares. You know, you get a post and you get a caption. That's a post, it lives on your Instagram feed forever and ever, never goes away. A story is a video, and it's usually a lot taller and longer. And the videos go, they're 15 seconds long, so you can add up multiples of them. And they go away after 24 hours. And you're thinking, well, who would want to do that? All of that work for it just to go away after 24 hours? It's really meant to have more of a casual type of conversation type of thing. So if a post is, here's what I made, look at this picture, here's the pattern, here's the fabric I use. A Instagram story is, 
here are my favorite parts about this pattern, or here are some close-ups of the fabric, or this is what I didn't like about it. And so when that goes away, it's kind of fine, but you can also save them as highlights, and we'll get into that a little bit too. Okay, so here's how I use Instagram to improve my sewing. You can search pattern hashtags, and we'll go over what that means, to see versions that others have made, and then you use those photos to assess fit, to analyze fabric choice, and you can also, within the Instagram stories, find a lot of really great video tutorials, and I'll give you three of my favorite accounts that are constantly providing really great information in that category. Okay, assessing fit. This is supposed to be a video, but it's not, we didn't play on Thursday either, I don't know. But these are all, at the top, hashtag. So over in vintage shirt dress. It's exactly what I'm wearing today. So when I went to make this dress, I said, I wanna know how this fits on a variety of body types. Maybe even a body type that is like mine, which is a parachute. So I typed in, hashtag, so over at vintage shirt dress. And if this video were to play, you would see there are 1,012 posts tagged with so over at vintage shirt dress. So you have 1,012 examples, models, people wearing this, showing you how it fits them, changes that they had to make, things they like, things they don't like. It's an incredible resource. But you can even see from the few pictures that we have here, all the different women and how the dress is kind of fitting them differently based on their body types. But what you can tell by the girl who's holding her skirt like this is that if you are more full figured in the bottom half, you're gonna have plenty of room. Plus, um, you can tell, I think that this girl here on the bottom right for you guys, the sleeveless version, you can really tell how big your flattering it looks and how the waistline sits and all of that. And then even the girls with the sleeves, you can tell. Is the sleeve drafted well? Is it a length that I like? You can start to assess all of those things to help you get a better footing heading into making a new pattern that you have never made before. All right, now we're gonna analyze fabric choice. So this is the same sew over at Vintage Shirt Dress using the same hashtag that I saw to show you guys. And we have a woman wearing a quilting cotton, we have a rayon, and we have a silk. So you can see how different the dresses look in the different fabrications. Uh, the quilting cotton is a little bit more stiff and structured. The rayon is a little bit more drapey and kind of falls closer to her body. And the silk looks like a fancy, like super nice, like cocktail dress. So you can really say, okay, what kind of, yeah, like, what am I going to be wearing? Where am I wearing this? What am I doing this for? And you can find examples of that in Instagram using the hashtag and say, okay, well, I think that the cotton one's a little too casual for me, and the silk one's a little too dressy, so we'll get the Goldilocks, and we'll go with the rayon. And so then you're on your, on your way to making, you know, the perfect version of the dress that you have in your head. You know, those pattern companies do a great job of suggesting fabrics, but sometimes they're like five, eight, ten suggestions, and you're like, well, how am I supposed to really know the difference between, I'm sure they all work and all look lovely, but what is it really going to look like whenever I get done. So this is a great way to find that out. Okay, again, another video that's supposed to play is not playing, but this is an Instagram story. This is a tutorial that I have done on my Instagram stories, and if you were able to watch it, you would see that it is how to uh, finish off the raw edges of pockets. So it's, it's less than two minutes long, it's really quick, and it walks you through the steps really, really quickly. Um, and there are a lot of really great people posting really great information within Instagram stories. So the first one I have suggested here is pronounced Weezer Dreams, the band Weezer. Does anyone remember them? <coughs> so that gives you an idea of what kind of person she is. She's a really cool chick. But she is a legitimate, like she works in the garment district for a brand. She is a pattern, oh gosh, a pattern. I can't remember her exact job title, but she is in charge of analyzing fit. So they get these fit samples back. She's in charge of analyzing them, altering them so that they will look good on every body and specifically their, their slim fit model and their curvy fit model. So when she goes on Instagram and she's making her own clothes, she's doing this for herself and she's telling us all about how she's doing it. 
she's looking at flat pattern pieces and she's saying this shoulder seam looks really wide for this particular design i'm going to double check this or that or the other thing and she's explaining why and how and like she gets paid to do this every day by her job and then comes home and gives all that information to us for free you do have to be a little bit patient not every single story that her name is grace not every single story that grace posts is the most educational and informational there's some cats in there there's cooking with her husband but if you stick around long enough you will get a lot of really really great information same thing with when michelle so when michelle just went through a pattern drafting course and now she is taking that information and sharing it with all of us ways to um take a princess seam pattern and convert it into one that is more basic uh taking you know making muslins and showing us things that are wrong and different and how to fix that on your flat pattern piece and then we have emily holman who does not work in the sewing uh industry or the fashion industry but she's been sewing forever and ever and makes impeccable clothes and gives you all these really cool tips and tricks. She showed once a way to install the um, bodice lining to the arm side and I'll never do it any other way ever again, ever. So I've got the, all that information for free. She's made my life so much easier and now all my linings look so much better just because I watched an Instagram story that she gave us. So, and there's lots of other really, really great examples of that too. These are just three that do it more often, very well, they have you know, good lighting and all that kind of stuff. And okay. Instagram stories go both ways, so searchable. Oh no, it's not searchable. Instagram is only searchable by a hashtag. Whereas Pinterest, you can search and it'll pull up keywords within the caption. Instagram is really only searchable by hashtag and by account name. So if you follow those account names, you'll see all their old posts, you'll stories. You'll see their posts and you'll only see the stories that are either less than 24 hours old or ones that they have chosen to put in the highlights. And I'll, again, I'll show you highlights later um, when we talk about the branding section of this, all of this. Um, but yes, sometimes they're really good about putting in highlights, sometimes they're not. 24 hours isn't very long. It isn't. That's why you have to be on Instagram a lot <laughs> to keep up with it all. But you'll find your favorites. You'll kind of get a feel for it. You know, like they have nine to five jobs. They're not usually posting during the day, all that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, if they, if they hashtag something, even after, even the hashtag for the story is gone within 24 hours, they won't show up there anymore. But if you have, if you search the hashtag "sew over vintage shirt dress" and someone's posted a story about that in the last 24 hours, you will be able to find it, and you'll be able to find all the posts, which is what I showed you earlier. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The posts they down. Correct. No matter if they're tagged or not. Other questions about Instagram? Yes. Well, it's not about Instagram. I just want to leave where I've been doing class during five minutes. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to ask you: Do you have a blog post or other posts in your about, um, nope, this is it. I will have one though. I'm recording this now and I will post this and so you will be able to see the rest of this conversation. But it's, I don't have like a library of social media videos. So. Have fun in your class. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it'll say see more in the bio. Yes. And I can always get to that bio. If you're I tapping see more and nothing's happening? Yeah. Okay, that's a problem with it. Yeah. You can try and turn off your phone and turn it back on again. I know that sounds silly, but sometimes that fixes things. Close the app, reopen it, uninstall the app and reinstall it. That's annoying, but that helps fix some bugs sometimes. Also, I mean, if you have your updates automatically updating within your phone, that helps a little bit too. But yeah, if you're tapping see more and nothing's coming up, that's not you. That's them. I have yeah. social media for my guild, and I post events on Instagram. Okay. When I post events on Facebook, I do like 10 yep. photo frames, yep. and I can make comments about each yep. frame. Can I also do that on Instagram, because I haven't been able to figure it out. So Instagram, within one post, you can add up to five photos. 
but they all have the same caption. You cannot do it as an individual. Yes. Yes. So what a lot of people like to do is have a general statement and then one. What number one picture is about? Two. What the second picture is about? Oh, like that. You do captions can be very long in Instagram, oh, okay. so don't let that limit you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about Instagram? Everyone following me now? Oh, good. <laughs> well, then let's go. Party's over. <laughs> okay, now we're going to talk about YouTube. My literal bread and butter YouTube. Um, so everyone knows you watch videos on YouTube. A lot of cat videos. <laughs> but this is my favorite YouTube quote. YouTube is addicting. I click on a music video. Next thing you know, I'm watching how to make ice cream. The YouTube vortex is what it's called. You start watching a video. You see a suggested one. You're like, oh, that's interesting. And then that takes you to another suggested video. Oh, that's interesting. And then before you know it, it's three days later, and you don't know what happened. But you're very educated. <laughs> so that's good. OK, so YouTube is made up of a few different parts. We have the channel which is the home of where all of my videos live. So I have a channel called Inside the Hem, and all of my videos are posted to that channel. And then I can organize my videos by playlist. And that makes it really easy for you guys because if you're only interested in seeing things that I've made, or you're only seeing, or only interested in seeing my long form tutorials, then you can go to that specific playlist and it'll just keep playing them one after the other for you and you can binge all my content really, really easily. Okay, how do you do YouTube? Okay, so we've got pattern reviews, we've got solo alongs, and we've got video tutorials. And YouTube, unlike Instagram stories, Instagram stories is a video format, YouTube is the long form version of that. So whereas on Instagram stories, you're really keeping it one minute, two minutes at most, on YouTube, I post videos that are more than two hours long sometimes. These are my swatch videos that I do for style maker fabrics. I also call it fabric porn, where it's just a whole video of me touching fabric, talking about fabric, and it's the best time ever. And people will sit there and watch this feature length film all about, it's like a documentary all about fabric. Um, so they're going to be longer, they're going to be more involved, they're going to have more detail than anything that you find in any other video on Instagram or um, I mean, Facebook can even put, post longer videos, but people like to keep things moving on Facebook. On YouTube, they go, they're prepared to stay. All right, so here are some examples of my pattern review videos. You can see it's all closed, but all the things that I have made. And the really cool part about it is that you get to see me like I am here today, moving, walking around. You can, again, kind of start to analyze some of those fit things that we talked about. You know, how is that fabric really moving? It's much different than in a photo. Photos are still shot. They can nip and tuck and hold things for a millisecond while the video, while the picture is being taken. In a video, I can't really hide much of anything. All the mistakes are very apparent. Um, and I love that. I love being able to share that I am not an expert sewist, but neither are a lot of other people that are watching my videos. So it's a very relatable way to see what people are really making and how these clothes really look, how they really wear, and all of that. But you can also see, I want to point out the um, lengths of the videos, anywhere from four minutes all the way up to almost eight. So a lot of talking about one pattern about one make, about one garment, a lot of detail in there. Things I liked, things I didn't like, what, how the fabric works, you know, things I would do differently, all of that. On YouTube? Yes. It won't be a pattern review, though. <laughs> but yes, it'll be on my YouTube channel. And then anytime I post a YouTube video, I also market it on Instagram and Facebook. So I'll post a still shot of this, letting people know that this video is available to them on the channel so they know it's there. But you should still be subscribed and you should still click the notification bell so that you get notified when I post videos. You never miss one that way either. Okay, so long. So long is a really unique feature uh, for YouTubers. So this is a way that I can take you through every single step of sewing a pattern. If you love indie sewing patterns because they walk you through every single step, you're going to love sew alongs. So this is a series of videos. All four of these videos were to make one garment. 
and in week one, I talked about how to pick your pattern size and how to choose fabric. In week two, we went through the first half of the steps, which I think the bodice steps, and then week three, we did the skirt steps, and then in week four, I reveal my dress and I talk to you about the success. It becomes a pattern review basically in the last week. I've had sew alongs that last eight weeks. I've had them that are short like this and they only last a month long, but you can either partake in the sew along with me, like every single week, do the steps I'm doing, or you can wait for it to be over and do them all in one weekend. Um, because the videos on YouTube are evergreen, they stay up forever, they're always on my channel, I have a special playlist just for each sew along. You can always find it, again, unlike Instagram, where all those videos would just disappear into nowhere. All right, video tutorials. Again, look at the length of these video tutorials. One of them is 23, almost 24 minutes, 17 minutes. They're longer tutorials. They're really breaking it down. They're giving you a lot of information, showing you with video how everything is done. Okay? All right, questions about YouTube? Yes. <laughs> I can't tell you that. No, okay, so, so Google owns YouTube. I told you that before. Google has their AdWords platform. The videos that play in the beginning of every single video are how I get paid. I get paid a fraction of a penny for every time you watch a video of mine. But you have to subscribe. No? Well, just by watching. Just by watching. So Subscribing is better because it helps YouTube realize that people care about me. So please subscribe. Also, please watch the entire video, the ad. Don't click skip now. You can click skip now for the cat, cat videos. Those cat video people, they don't need any more money. Try to subscribe and just do it. We'll talk. I'll show you. I will personally help you figure that one out. No problem. <laughs> any other questions about YouTube? Yes? Why did you change your intro recently? Because I like this one better. Did you like the other one better? I just thought it was... The other one felt, to me, amateur, boring, choppy. With choppy, you choppy. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted something that looked a little bit more professional that wasn't me talking, because I talk a lot in my videos already, so I didn't want more talking. But like the intro didn't change on your own videos. Yeah. No, no, no. It, because that's how it's edited together. YouTube doesn't do any of my editing for me. All my, edit, all my videos are edited together. I just want to give a big plug for your jeans alteration on the waistband video. That was me. You know, that's one of those things where I wasn't even going to post that. And then it's been one of my most popular videos where people have done that tutorial than any of my others. I wore pants yesterday that I have done that too. Yes. Um, how do you, uh, how do you learn how to um, edit your video? So luckily when I was in college studying broadcasting, I learned a lot about editing there. That's really the biggest thing that, well that and storytelling are the biggest things that I learned in college that I'm able to apply to my life now, which is a big relief because that was a very expensive way to go into sales. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have a Mac, as you can see, they have a program on here called iMovie. Oh yeah, I have Mac as well. Yep, and I, that's what I use. It's basic, but I don't, I don't want my videos to have the swipe in, the ding, the this. The, I'd like for them to just be clear and concise because I'm, again, giving a lot of information. I don't need the flashy stuff. You can get video editing software that will do all of that for you. Uh, After Effects is a good example if anybody wants to do that. But it's complicated. It's, you know, no. Nobody I subscribed. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, iMovie, and then there's lots of tutorials where you can learn how to do it. I find it. Just at this point, I'm just like, shh, 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 and it's really simple. But you know, start small. Don't start with a 30 minute video. Start with a 3 minute video, and you can work your way up from there. Thank you. Yes. I have a, a question. Can you reiterate what you said about the ads? And, uh, so, at the beginning of a YouTube video, an ad will play. If someone has their videos monetized, an ad like will play. State Farm. Yeah, exactly. And then it's like counting down. You can skip this ad in five, four, three, two, one. If you skip, I get a fraction of a penny. If you don't skip, I get a little bigger fraction of a penny. <laughs> yeah, so skip on cat people. They don't need any <laughs> And then, in addition to that, I also have, like many of the vendors you guys are seeing out here today, 
will sponsor videos. So they will pay me to talk about their products in my videos. And before you go off and say, oh, well, you know, how do you really know she really loves it? Well, that's where the trust comes in. That's where we get to know each other. You learn that I would not take a sponsorship from somebody that had a crappy product or had something that I didn't truly use and love all the time. And you'll just see that over time. You can tell when people are just taking anything that comes their way. I turn down more opportunities than I take. Yes, I have some other questions. So someone tells me, if you see my blog, where do I go to see a blog? Usually it's their website. So my blog is insightthehem.com. I don't post all my stuff there. It's just a supplemental little place. But most people who are bloggers have a website that's some name. So I need to respond back. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I'm going to see more are posing a question to their viewers yes. so that they will comment. Yes. Like, how is that important? Again, it goes back to the uh, the YouTube algorithm. YouTube deeming, oh, a lot of people are engaging with this video. A lot of people are commenting, this video is important and people like this video. So you will, your video will appear higher in the suggested video ranking. So, yes, comments are great, likes are great, all of that. If you are watching somebody that you love, participate with them because it really does it really does help us other questions about YouTube Quick question about the format in general do you find that just that blogs are going are a little bit less prevalent yes and bloggers are becoming more prominent vloggers are becoming more prominent YouTube. It's really two sides of the same point. You're either a vlogger or a blogger. You're either a writer or you're, you know, good talking to a camera. Um, so there are people who really only like to read, and there are people who only like to listen. So I don't think anyone's doing better or doing worse, going away, growing. Maybe in our community there are more vloggers because there weren't any, really. Um, but both jobs are very difficult. So if someone's not really committed to it, then yeah, the number of blogs would, would reduce. Just because it's blogger. video blogger. So that's YouTubers blogger. are video bloggers. Blogger. That makes sense? Blogger. Okay, I've got a couple more minutes to talk about building a brand on Instagram. Um, some I know that there are some people who own businesses in here or who want to have a consistent, appealing look on your social media. So Instagram is my favorite, so this is the one I chose to talk about branding for. But if you want to grow a following, for whether to monetize it and make money, or whether just to make friends and make connections, these are the suggestions that I have. This is why Instagram is my favorite. Visual, easy to use, popular, friendly. There's a ton of really sweet, awesome, amazing people on Instagram that sew and want to help you and encourage you, I promise. Don't be afraid of it. Go there, you will be embraced. So five main elements to your profile. You've got your profile picture. I recommend a photo of a face. It does not have to be your face. But please, put a face. No cats, no kids. You know what I mean? You want to be personable. Again, social media. If you go to a networking event with a bag over your head, who's going to talk to you? Nobody. You have to show yourself. But you can see for mine, it's not a picture, it's an illustration. So it's kind of fun and lighthearted, and that should be kept in mind whenever you're considering a brand as well. The name. So there it is your, at the very top is inside the hem. That is my profile, which is different than my name. So when you go to create an Instagram, they will have you create a profile name. And that is how you will be discovered. That is how you'll be found. That is how you'll be referred to. But when people go to your profile, there's a separate place for your name. A lot of people put their first and last name. But I find as many times as you can tell Instagram, Instagram, I'm a sewer. Instagram, I'm interested in sewing. Instagram, bring the sewing people to me. Instagram will do that for you. So I put my name and what I do. Lindsay, sewing blogger. So whatever it is that you do, you can put in there too. If it's related to a specific topic, put the topic in there. Then you have your bio. And your bio is short and concise. You have a limited number of characters there. But again, utilize the resources. I, I, put, uh, I mentioned YouTube in mine because I want Instagram to know I'm affiliated with YouTube. 
And again, I hashtag sewing because I want Instagram to know. So we bring the sewing people. And then I did, I broke it up to make it a little bit easier to read with some emojis, some call outs, capital letters. And then a, a call to action is the next part. No. Um, so watch my most recent video. Here's a link. You can change that link every single minute of every single day if you want. They, there's no limit to it. So <laughs> keep that fresh, keep that updated, use it as a call to action. You've got a new product, link to the new product. You've got a new blog post, link to your blog post. You've got a new, I don't know, something else, <laughs> link to it and tell people where they can find your stuff. Your profile is what people are going to see for the you for the very first time usually. So you really want to help them find out how to learn about you and learn about what you do. Which brings me to highlights. So we talked about this a little bit. I can pick and choose which of my Instagram stories I want to live forever on my profile. And this is where they live, the About Me, Mini Toots, which is short for tutorials, uh, the ITH squad. These are people that are posting about me, either in their stories or their posts. And I encourage that because, you know, I want to be, um, you know, building that community more and more. And then I've got my base. So anytime I post a story that falls into one of these categories, before or after the 24 hours is up, I can go in and then assign them to whatever highlight they belong to, and then they live forever on my profile. There's a limited amount that you can add to your highlights, so don't go crazy, but you can have a lot of information there as well. And then here are my posts, and all I have to say about posts are lighting is everything. That's all you need to worry about with posts. Lighting, and for those of you that live in the Pacific Northwest, you have the best lighting for photos of anybody else. Believe it or not, direct sunlight is the worst way to take photos. Some overcast, gloomy day is the absolute best. But if you must take a photo in a dark space, there are resources to help you cheat. So you can see how mine kind of all have a little bit of a consistent, sort of similar look. It's not because I took them all on the same day. It's because I edited the photos to make it look consistent. I use an app on iPhone, sorry, Androiders, um, called Lightroom. Should be installed on your phones already. If not, it's a free download. And then I purchased something called Presets. So just Google Photo Presets, find one that you like. They're like $30. I think I got maybe eight different ones. And come to the pop-up shop. I'm in 604 after this, and I'll show you just how it's three clicks. And you can edit a photo and it looks, I do not know how to edit photos. This is me tapping one button and this is what happens. So, let's see. Questions about branding? Three minutes? Can you tell me your 64, did you say? 604, yeah. Oh, it's a little pop-up shop. If you see, if you walk by and see that poster, that's where it is. And I'll be there from 2.30 to 3.30. So come right there. I have all that information here. Some of this is already, well, most of it's over. So I'll see you from 2 30, 3 30 today or tonight at dinner. Is anybody coming to ASG dinner? Okay, I'll see you there. Feel free to stop and talk to me then. Otherwise, I'll see you on the internet. Thank you guys.